<laughs> let's move on and let's talk about this video. This is a video from a YouTube channel called Tell Us More regarding Andrew Schultz. Um, it's called Schultz is Losing His Mind. I'm sure some of you guys will appreciate it because I think I've got in I've got in the chat some people that aren't fans of Andrew Schultz and who think he's a bit insufferable and annoying. So let's see if this guy thinks the same thing. I haven't watched the video myself, so we're gonna react to it live, live and direct with you guys. It's called Andrew Schultz is losing his mind. Let's check it out and let's see what this guy has to say about Andrew Schultz. Schultz with the melts. Let's see what he has to say. Play, bro. It was a great year for Andrew Schultz. It was the first full year since he released his comedy special, Infamous. And his career reached heights few comedians will ever experience. He sold out and performed shows for his tour all across the world in venues like the Royal Albert Hall in London, the Aware Super Theatre in Sydney, and the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. But most impressive of all, he sold out Madison Square Garden in New York, not once, but twice. Jesus Headlining Christ. MSG has been a dream of Andrew since he first started comedy, a dream only he and his father believed in. <laughs> so for him to sell it out twice on the same that weekend video. was something special. If that were all he'd achieved in 2023, the year would have been a huge success but he also had a great year for his podcast flagrant from a viewership perspective the podcast did better than ever in 2023 breaking in 160 million views on youtube and that's not to mention all the listens it gets on wow. audio platforms andrew also appeared in two movies starring in new people with jonah hill and lauren london and white men can't jump with synchro walls and jack harlow those aren't the best credits are they because i haven't seen either of these movies they're not the best credits ever are they White Man Can't Jump Remake and You People with Jonah Hill and Lauren London. Those are tough roles. Um, I'm surprised that Schultz hasn't got a Spotify deal. What do you guys think? I know some of you don't like his pod, but his pod does get hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions. I'm surprised he hasn't been offered a deal. I'm actually surprised. I'm not going to lie. By every metric, it looks like he's killing it. But as his fame has grown, something else has grown alongside with it. His ego. Yes, Booth McGee, they remade uh, White Man Can't Jump. And I think um, the guy, the white kid in it is um, Jack Harlow. They cast Jack Harlow as the other guy. <laughs> yeah, they made, they remade it. I don't, don't ask me why. I don't know why. I remember seeing the trailer and the trailer's fucking awful. So I, I imagine the movie's pretty terrible. But yeah, they, re they remade Black Man Can't Jump. I mean, White Man Can't Jump. How much longer before Schultz becomes irrelevant? He has become so unable with his narcissistic personality, lol. Nah, I don't... You know what, Mexican Salsa? I think Schultz is fine. I think... How can I say this? I've known of Schultz for a while, and he's always been like this. He's always been a cunt since the day dot. Since Brilliant Idiots with fucking... Um, Charlemagne, early doors when Charlemagne used to tell Schultz to chill out and he was getting a little bit too, you know, high on his own supply. Schultz has been a cunt from the beginning. This is the thing people don't realize. So I don't think he's going to die. He's going to lose relevance. I think his fans like him in despite his personality quirks and how, you know, insufferable he is. So I think his fans are in it for the long term. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. I think he's done it the right way. He built up his fan base slowly by himself without Rogan's help and shit. And then obviously when he needed Rogan co-sign, he got it. But he built his fan base up like slowly and surely over the years. So I think his fans know how much of a cunt. Like if you go on a flagrant subreddit, you'll see. People complain about shots all the time. Interrupting guests, uh, being fucking combative, not wanting to ever admit when he's wrong. People would say that all the time about him when he's read it, but they stick by him because, you know, they know he's a prick and he's like their prick, you know? Like, I think I think some of you, like, <clears throat> are, are surprised by how he is, but <clears throat> I swear to God, from the content I remember watching of Charles with Charlemagne, he's always been like this. He, it's maybe got worse when he's got with more money and fame, but he's always been this personality. <laughs> he's always been a bit of a pisshead. To be honest. Go. Over the past year or so, there have been countless moments caught on camera where Schultz has been patronizing, dismissive of others' opinions, or just plain rude. He often comes across like he thinks he's the smartest person in the room and that everyone else is two steps behind. Most examples of this can be seen on the Flagrant podcast, where Andrew has made a number of his guests feel extremely uncomfortable. And judging by some of Flagrant's more recent episodes, this doesn't seem to be getting any better. 
Before we get into it, it's important to understand the dynamic on the podcast. Andrew is the central. I've always found it interesting how people can have such big egos from just speaking into a microphone for a living. Is one thing having an ego like that when you've created a product or a service that millions of people are using that change people's lives? I can understand that. Like, I've worked in startups for the majority of my employment career. I'm currently working for one now. It's a bit shit, but you know, it is what it is. And the ego of startup founders is somewhat justifiable and understandable when they come in and they create the Uber of whatever product sector they're in, right? Um, and it raises a bunch of money and they sell it for a bunch of money and blah, blah, blah. The ego of a startup founder is almost understandable. You can get why they walk around like they're fucking Jesus. But having an ego or having that high opinion of yourself when you're a podcaster, when you're a stand-up comedian is insane, really, when you think about it. Like, you literally think you're that intelligent that smart because what you have people watching your videos you get tons of views all of a sudden you think views equate intelligence like views equate intellect views equate like smarts iq it's like what it's so bizarre to me it really is like these guys have produced nothing of any note outside of making people laugh on stage and yet you're walking around like you're literally tim cook reincarnated and it's like hmm not really, or, you know, Steve Jobs and Carly, not Tim Cook, because Tim Cook hasn't died, but you get what I mean. Central figure on the show and directs most of the questions and conversation. Akash, who typically sits beside Andrew, Akash. is also a comedian and essentially fills the role of Schultz's sidekick. He laughs at almost all his jokes, no matter how outrageous, and constantly <laughs> agrees with everything he says. Mark is also a comedian and is not too dissimilar to Akash in his dynamic with Andrew. I'm not going to lie, a little tip. Mark Gagon's podcast, I forgot what it's called. I watched an interview he did with Ari Shafir. Mark's podcast is actually really good. I'm not going to lie. I randomly watched an interview that he did with Ari Shafir and it was really good. This Mark Gagnon dude is actually pretty decent as a podcaster and he's actually quite funny as well. So I recommend you check him out. His, his pod, I forgot the name of it. I think it's like a camp thing. I think it's like a camp theme or something. But Mark Gagnon is really cool. He's really funny. I'm not going to lie. Andrew. While he doesn't come across like as much of a yes man as Akash, he routinely piggybacks on the jokes Andrew makes and rarely puts up any resistance when Schultz gets out of line. Then there's Alex, the producer of Flagrant. Of all of them, Alex is the least vocal, but unlike the others, he often challenges Schultz when he disagrees with him, and there's been many times where he's been the voice of reason on the pod. As a whole, the crew has a bad habit. I've always thought the layout of the pod is a bit odd, isn't it? There's so many people on stage, don't you think so? Like... They don't need to have these two on stage. It could easily be behind the cameras and maybe you you switch the cameras to them when they're speaking. Don't you always, I've always thought it's odd how there's so many of them on the screen. Don't you think so? <laughs> it's just like, imagine you're getting interviewed. Like you're, you're having to like turn, you don't know who to pay attention to. It's just too much going on. What do you think? I've always thought there's too many people on this show. Like, do you need do like I don't know maybe I don't maybe I'm thinking too deep about it but it just seems to be overly crowded for nothing really too many dudes to observe is that a yeah let's continue bit of interrupting guests and laughing way too hard at jokes that really aren't that funny yeah exactly shades cow I agree with that also I feel like Andrew has been hustling long enough to, for a little bit of leeway and I think he truly loves comedy I'm like yeah no there's no doubt that Andrew Schultz really does like stand-up comedy and really I could believe Andrew Schultz is definitely at home pouring over his jokes um you know um obsessing over a line rewriting jokes a million times like he's definitely always wanted to be a rock star stand-up comedian he always wanted to be big and well known but he also wants to be funny like he actually you can tell you somebody that cares about making because I don't know about you guys but I've noticed a lot of these guys from the Jerry universe you don't really feel like they care about pe making people laugh, you know? <laughs> I don't know if this makes sense, but you never get the feeling they want they want you to laugh and have a good time. I think that's why people respond so well to the Shane Gillis podcast, My Secret, well, My Secret Podcast and shit, right? Because it's one of the only pods in that space or within the Jerry universe where the host actually want to make you laugh. The rest of them are trying to share with you their opinion on politics, on Biden, on Trump on this climate change protest or what it's just nonsense 
that's way outside of their remit. Whereas I think at least with Schultz, he's trying to be funny. It's just unfortunate that on the, I think his podcast personality is what lets him down because on these podcasts, he sits there like he's fucking Jordan Peterson and it's very hard to stomach when he starts to get into his fucking philosophical thing. He starts to use his hands, right? He starts to do all this stuff with his hands. He's just like, <laughs> it's like, relax, Andrew, relax. In April 2023, Whitney Cummings made an appearance on the podcast. Like Schultz, Whitney is a comedian and the two have been good friends for years. In the comedy scene, Whitney doesn't exactly have the best reputation, as a lot of people find her annoying and unfunny, so it's not out of the ordinary for her to receive criticism. But in this episode, any and all criticism was directed at Schultz. People think they fucked, you know. I don't think that's true. I just think, you know, they're just good friends, to be fair. But I've seen on the Reddit, people are suggesting that they think there's some sexual energy and friction there between Whitney and Andrew Schultz. I don't think so. Andrew came into the podcast with super high energy and started poking fun at Whitney from the very first minute. But you just said that I didn't watch any of the roasts. Uh, no, I just... Um, Is that what you just said? I just said... What did you just say? Uh, I that I didn't watch one minute of the roast. No, I was said I sent you a link. And Just I... tell me what you said. Don't do the like the the golden retriever outside the car window on the highway, please. <laughs> <laughs> just let's just talk to each other. I love that you just call me a dog and no, like, no, because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. when you think I'm setting you up for something, <laughs> you do dog, this though. thing. She brushed his comment off, but just minutes later, Andrew continued making more comments about her facial expressions. You're Why do you look this. at me with these faces like it's difficult? She this can't control is, it. Is, is I, listening hard for you? I, this is what it... Wow. She can't... The little ad lib at the back, she can't control that. That was fucking... <laughs> that was even more brutal. It looks like when you're listening. This is you listening, right? This is you... <laughs> I'm not talking. What do I do with my face while the other people? Big up. Flagrant setup gives me the view vibes. Yeah, true. The view. Oh, I missed the original of the view. Who's that blonde lady that always used to fucking have trouble? I miss when they used to have that really crazy. No, she wasn't crazy. She was just conservative. That's the thing as well that you miss in TV. They don't have balance. I think The View was much better when they had that conservative woman on there and she'd just be firing off. They'd always clash on things. I think that's what makes it really fun. But then they got rid of her, innit? That blonde lady that was conservative. I used to love those clips when I've seen them battle with each other. That was so good. Not Megan McCain, no, not Megan McCain. The other, there was another lady before. She's like younger looking with like curlier hair. Not Megan McCain, no. Megan McCain was... um was later on i forgot the name of it what's her name but it was so good man those clips are so funny um i really do wish they would kind of bring back that kind of type of panel discussions thing but i wonder why it doesn't look that crowded on the view is it because of the, the of the table you think is that what it is for my people in the stream chat who know stuff about set designs yeah that's it. elizabeth hasselbeck that's a lady exactly there we got jared Mellerick. thank you for that elizabeth hasselbeck that's a woman do we think the view works because they have a table is that why it doesn't look crowded? Maybe the table helps. Maybe the desk helps to break it up visually. So maybe if these guys had like a table in front of them, like a newscaster thing, it would make it less crowded. But because we see their legs and their whole body, it just makes it look huge. Is that the reason why? Maybe that's why. Maybe it's a kind of visual thing. At this point, Whitney called him out for the way he was acting, but it didn't take long for him to pick back up where he left off. What when you, I was what's broke. up with you? What's up with you today? Why do you you want to fight with me today? I, like I didn't want to fight. <laughs> you want to fight with me today, dude? I love doing corporate gigs because it's also like it's a big business. I think for more like female comics because you know like being a stand up as a woman, it's not a really, it's not a business. It's not. A, well, it's not a viable. Yeah. Can you tell us how hard it is. Like I'm not saying it's hard. Tell us how hard it is to I'm be a female it's, comic. Like it's, it's that's not, what we love to listen to. I'm, like, Jesus Christ, Andrew, man. This is so hard to watch the first time. I forgot how hard it was to watch, man. I know Whitney can be annoying. I know she can be insufferable and she can be in her own head. But she didn't deserve this, man. She didn't deserve this. This is some mean girl shit, bro. Like, I don't know what happened before when they fucking filmed, but this was so unnecessary, so uncalled for, so mean. Like, literally ganging up on her. Literally ganging up on her. <laughs> It's so horrible, man. 
bumba right. I'm saying, I think it's hard to be it's a so big... It's top on the road. No, it's not what I fucking said. What are and you guys doing? trying to tell you to go back to the hotel. No one knows. It's so different than being a woman anywhere else have... in life. <laughs> not... How is being a comic on the road any different than just going out to a bar? I always hear this from female comics. They're like, guys always try to go back to your hotel. And it's like, look at the face again. You're listening uh, no, again. Just you put like, on I, your listening just putting face. Words in my I would mouth. rather, I'd rather you look at me and just think about like a like a dog bone. Just think about a bone. <laughs> just think about a bone. Think about your happy face, and then look like this when I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe to say it was starting to get awkward. I don't think anybody could talk to me that way. I don't think there's a single person that could ever talk to me in that way. I don't care how much money you make, how famous you are. There's some, there's a level of disrespect that you just should never, ever let somebody. There's a level of disrespect that you can never let somebody do to you. And this is one of them. I don't know how Whitney put up with this, man. I would have walked out time ago. This is fucking obscene. So unnecessarily rude. And this wasn't even 10 minutes into the podcast. Whitney seemed to be forcing laughs to mask the fact she was getting annoyed, God but she couldn't keep damn. it up for very long. LAPD, I mean, their whole thing is like, you don't really need, like, you know, a BB gun I have loaded, but if you have a gun, like, that solves half of your problem. I feel like Stop you're having gun. four different conversations with yourself right now. <laughs> you know what? First of all, how dare you? I came in here, I'm being attacked by you motherfuckers. I'm so <laughs> attacked. I you sat down, you I'm said in. I went I, high. I, 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 Eventually, Whitney had enough and started firing back, hitting a pain point for Andrew about his fertility, as he and his wife had been struggling to conceive a child for some time. Yes, there we go, Whitney. Fire back, Whitney. There we go, Whitney, baby. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't you dare do that. It's not a rock climber of the 1700s when we what's, didn't have cables and shit. What's going on? Did, did, uh, I need to know what's you, going on. You, you come on here, on, you on. say you're a big old bull dyke out of the nowhere. Hold on. Right? I'm not a bull dyke. I'm come just, on. Did, what, did Emma take down your diehard poster? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on at home, Emma? You come in. What is going on at home? You come in and you tell me that you're lying about What's something. What's going on? Are you oh shooting? I need to get to the bottom are of it. Are you shooting blanks? Why are you, are you such a grum? Yes. She also highlighted his hypocrisy for mocking Hollywood and the movie business up until he started getting roles. After which she did a complete 180. When the podcast got past the hour mark, Schultz noticeably slowed down, with the high energy he had earlier in the episode completely disappearing. He started getting deep and pretty much turned the whole podcast into some sort of weird therapy session. You got a lot of people who love you. Well, I think that the key in my best friend, uh, Nikki, Don't explain it. Told me. Don't explain it. If you're going to get your heart broken. Don't explain it. Just take it in. Just take it in. But I, I agree. Stop trying. Pause. Pause. Take what in? Take what in? Pause. But I wonder, you know, I'm wondering aloud here. The ladies in the chat can attest to this. You know, there's some guys who are like not brave enough to just like make their intentions known about what they want to do with a female and shit. And sometimes they do the thing where they're like, they aggressively neg or they're aggressive. They're like, they're, they, they're aggressively rude. But underneath it is because they just really like the person. I wonder if that's the thing. Do you think that's the, do you think that's what's going on here? Do you think everybody in that room secretly wants to bang Whitney, but they're too afraid to admit it. So they all side like dogpiling her and shit. Do you think that's what happened? I wonder if that was the case. Hmm. Because it seemed very unnecessary. Hmm. Trying to but science what do you want it. me to say, though? Just Stop nothing. being a nerd with your Don't facts. Don't say anything. Just take it Don't in. Don't be a nerd it. with your facts. But hey. I'm going to say a quote that resonated with me. Yeah, by give some it a second. Gay guy. Just give it a second. Just, I just want to hear about. I want to hear about your friend. But I'm telling you, I'm grieving. House I'm doing everything I need to do. Caring about you. That's what I want to hear about. Yeah, they show up. Which, by the it way, it was probably frustrating. And it was probably like, annoying. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. I was kind of like. Because a lot of people were talking about that they were worried about me and, you know. What an awesome thing. I know, I agree. That people care. From here, Schultz kept trying to psychoanalyze Whitney, which felt really out of place, especially given how the podcast started. But this change in his approach didn't make him any less rude. I think you're going through a lot, and I think it's really cool that you have friends that care about you enough to show up and just be like, hey, how are you feeling? Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. And I know in that moment, it's easy to reject it. You know, like, I know once I was... No, I was uh, just trying to understand how I'm perceived. Let me tell you a story. 
Okay. Hollywood's never been like fair. Why should it be? Well, that's I mean, thing. it's like neither okay. sports. So they attack you and try and make you, they try and basically bully you in a way. And then they're trying to like, it's almost, this is kind of patronizing. This is almost insulting. This is probably worse than the first bit. I'm not going to lie. I'd rather actually, I'd rather have you try to dogpile me and try to like, you know, put words in my mouth and be patronizing and all that sort of shit than all than this stuff. This pseudo, you know, philosophical, psychological nonsense thing that they're doing here is like, nah, don't try and psychoanalyze me, mate. Don't do all this nonsense. Don't do all this fucking, you know, um, Sam Harris-esque fucking introspection and shit. Nah, I'm okay. I don't need this from you. Now, this is a this is a fucking wild take that the guys don't really appreciate. I think it's sorry. Can I say something about no, Nickelback? No, I was in the middle of a sentence. I know, but if we're I moving know, on. but we're not moving on. But it's about you, this. Okay. It's about this. <laughs> Whitney, 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 you have to have more self worth, man. Whitney, come on, bro. Whitney, come on. You can't let somebody talk to you like this, man. I would have dashed that fan in his face, man. Go fuck yourself. Fucking hell, man. Let's go back one more time. That was so brutal. I remember watching it the first time and it feels even worse reading it now. Oh, what a horrible guy, bro. Why was he like this to her? Aren't they meant to be friends? Isn't that meant to be your friend? Like, why are you treating your friend like this? On camera too, like, come on, bro. This is a fucking wild take that the guys don't really appreciate. I think it's sorry. Can I say something about No, Nicole, I was in the middle of a sentence. I know, but if we're I know, on. but we're not moving on. It's but about this. Okay. It's about this. Her face here says it all. The fact that Schultz spent the entire podcast interrupting her and then had this reaction when she interrupted him is wild. And viewers pretty much all agreed that he was acting out of line. Andrew woke up this day and decided not to let his guests talk and attack every single thing they say. My respect for Whitney just skyrocketed due to how she handled this. Respect for Schultz has plummeted. At the end of the podcast, Whitney said this would be her final appearance on Flagrant. Listen, um, I think the takeaway from this is that episode. this is my final appearance on the flagrant <laughs> no you, you're more than welcome to come every yeah. single time you want andrew misinterpreted what she meant here and she may have been serious about not coming back because as yet she hasn't made another appearance Schultz's behavior on the Whitney episode isn't something new. Months earlier, in November 2022, he appeared on an episode of the Full Send podcast where he did something similar. The podcast wasn't going particularly well, and Schultz started getting at the hosts for their lack of preparation. This led to a confrontation between him and Steiny, one of the hosts of the podcast, which ended up being so awkward the podcast almost got scrapped. Me taking time. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I forgot to make a video about this when it happened. When this bit, when this episode finally leaked online, quote unquote, I forgot to make a video. I should have made a video about it, but I didn't understand why everybody was siding with Schultz when I saw the when I saw the full clip. I was like, wasn't he being a little bit of a cunt anyway himself? To the the Steiny kid obviously has his issues and people don't like him. I understand, but I never understood the narrative that was going around that Schultz was the came out as the he was the correct one in this exchange. I felt like he came across like a bit of a cunt himself. He walked into that studio thinking he was fucking, I don't know, do you know what I mean? Like Brad Pitt or something. It's like, you're not that big of a deal, bro. I'm out of my day to do this and then feeling Dude, like I've I'm never forcing been... you guys to do the podcast. Why I thought you were just being a little annoying. How? I think, that, I think you're annoying. Really? A yeah. little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what, what made me, what makes you think that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I it's just... going to be like a therapy session. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck? Like he did with Whitney, Schultz then started analyzing Steiny and acting as though he had him all figured out. No, just say how you honestly feel. Don't. I feel good, bro. I think you're pretty You don't funny. feel good. You don't feel good. You feel insecure yeah. right now because you think I don't like you. I think, that, I think you need attention. I think you're doing anything you can to get attention. And right now you're making this podcast about you, which is the most boring part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> letting someone talk to you like that because they've got a lot of followers and stuff is fucking insane honestly i could never let that be a thing letting somebody speak to you like that because they've got followers is fucking wild <laughs> you're the boring part of the conversation oh he's such a bitch we have much more interesting people to discuss whose lives are more fascinating no, no. 
Oh, fuck. I don't ever want to do a podcast again, straight up. <laughs> Even that doesn't sound real. You might have just retired him. Oh, straight but, up. Yeah. Now, Steiny is often the butt of the joke in that group, so he's an easy target. But Schultz really didn't need to go after him as much as he did. In isolation, you might not think much of it. But when you also consider his treatment of Whitney, it starts to look a lot worse. Exactly. Therapizing people is one thing, but Andrew has another habit that might be just as bad. For whatever reason, he regularly touches his guests on flagrant during their conversations. Most of the time, this is just in a friendly and harmless way, although I'm sure there are still some people who don't appreciate it. But other times, it crosses the line into being in a... <laughs> he just grabbed his hand. What's he doing? Oh... <sighs> You know what, though? To be fair to him, to be fair to him, I think he probably does that as a technique to try to, like, foster fake familiarity. I think a lot of those guys do that. They want to, like, be bros. And they, I think a lot of these guys, like Schultz, they want to speed up the relationship. They want to speed up the getting to know each other thing. So they want you to be friends straight away. So I have you on my show. Yeah, that's my boy. We're boys. I've known him. He's my friend. We're boys. We're boys. And one way to make somebody your boy by force is to just be overly familiar with them. And like loads of touching. Ah, you know what I mean? So I think that's what these guys do. Because even, I think everybody in that kind of space does it. That, that whole overly touching thing. So I think that's where he gets it from. It's still annoying. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want him to touch me. But I think that's why they do it. It's like a tactic to like foster or to fast forward the friendship um you know making process or something appropriate there's no better example of this than when logan paul was on the podcast in august 2023 schultz spent the majority of the podcast cozying up to logan which oh, is strange yeah. given how controversial yeah he was sucking off logan boy schultz loves logan paul he loves logan paul i've never seen I ne i've never seen schultz so like like this actually i watched that full interview i was like wow man schultz really fucking likes this guy isn't it he gave him a real easy ride special a character he is but what was more weird was how schultz kept groping him he was squeezing logan's thighs chest arms really anywhere he could reach all while commenting on how buff he is i love you guys Welcome it's always back. a good time great. kicking out with the too. boys you're doing great thanks oh, uh yeah bro i wasn't uh I was engaged. Now I'm engaged. Yo, you are, dude. I'm fucking engaged. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop. I'm putting the what gay in the game. Dude, doing? he got D's, bro. This is that this is that white boy banter, isn't it? Like this is that white boy banter. If you touch me like that and I get hard, we just have to fuck. You know what I mean? You can't be touching me like that. This is that white boy banter because if I get a hard on and you keep touching me like this, I'm gonna have to turn off the lights. Do we have to turn off the lights and close the fucking blinds? Don't touch me like that and make me excited, okay? If you get me excited, I can't be responsible for what happens next, okay? We're both in this together. So don't touch me like that and get me happy because when I'm happy and, you know, you'll say, oh, it's not screaming. Like, don't, don't scream when I'm happy. You touched me. I didn't tell you to touch me. Now you're touching me. And now I'm turned on and now you're getting upset that I, all my clothes are off. <laughs> Don't don't touch me like that because I might take off all my clothes. And if if I take off all my clothes, I'm not putting them back on until I bust. Okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna put on my clothes again until I bust. So don't touch me. Don't get me excited. Just just keep our distance. <laughs> Wait, did he? Oh, oh. This happened literally two minutes into the pod, and it didn't stop there. Oh, he's serious, bro. He's serious. Come on, let me squeeze your arms again. Yeah. He's oh. serious, bro. Come on. Honestly, I didn't notice how much he was touching him until this. I didn't notice, and he's grabbing both of you. Like he's literally like he's he's trying to get a feel of his of his bicep. Like actually trying to like you know get some. Um, tactile memories of it of like how it feels around his arms uh, inside his hand sorry jesus christ schultz what the fuck are you doing feel that though feel that, no, no, feel no, no, that. No, no, i've been trying to size him up and i'm like yo he's kind he of might big be stress between us Andrew, come Andrew, on, bro. I'm assaulting the guests. Bro, come He's on, bro. I'm serious, bro. I had to make sure the legs are also getting worked oh, out. On, you know bro. what I mean? He's trying to be serious. Chill, don't do that to me. Don't do that to okay. me. Are you concerned? Do you think he's on stuff? Do you think do you think Schultz is on stuff? What's the theory online? Because you guys read it better than I do. Do you think he's on stuff? Do you think Schultz is on stuff? Do you think he's on pills and stuff? 
What do you think? It's a bit much the touching, isn't it? It's a bit much. Do you think he's like on something? I don't know what. Like maybe an Addy. Like big up Billy Bats. Oh, lols, coke fuck. for the cocaine fund. Yeah, big up Billy Bats. Big up Billy Bats. These days, with the prices nowadays, this ain't three dollars ain't gonna go far. But you know, it's all every penny counts, my friend. But big up Billy Bats. Maybe I have to go to Colombia. Actually, I'll get. I can get some good gear for three dollars. But big up Billy Bats. But what do you guys think? Do you think he's on something? Do you think he's just a weirdo? Do you think he's trying to do that overly familiar thing? Somebody mentioned in the stream chat that it's a power move. Do you think it's a power move? I don't know, man. I'm try I don't. Part of me thinks he's just trying to suck up to, to to Logan. Maybe it's not that deep. Maybe he's just trying to suck up to him, and he wants him to know, hey, we're friends. We're friends. We're friends. We're friends. We're friends. Um, I don't think there's nothing sexual, of course. I don't think there's even drugs. I just think he's desperate for the clout. He's like literally trying to rub the clout off of him. He's trying to, sorry, absorb some of his clout. Maybe that's what's going on there. Maybe. about fighting Mike Perry potentially. Yo, if, son, no. that's a harder fight. No, no, he's 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 fight, he ain't bro. trying to do that. That's a harder fight. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? How you just got that in the tuck like that? Come. <laughs> no... Let me tell you Take something. Your shirt yeah, Take your shirt off. Though. Take it. your shirt off. Take your shirt off. Nah, yeah, yeah. we but, won't oh, be able to hear. Oh, let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go. You got yeah. That at several points here, Logan made it obvious the groping wasn't welcome, but Schultz didn't seem to care. The whole thing was just bizarre, and another guest might have been far less forgiving than Logan. One guest that hasn't been afraid to challenge Schultz is Shane Gillis. Shane is a popular comedian who first appeared on the Flagrant podcast in October 2021. At the time, he had just released his first special on YouTube and had made his first appearance on the Joe Rogan experience. Today, we had to remove the mic from the trouble because he had such a crazy weekend in Vegas. But um, today, we are joined by one of my favorite comics working today. The newly viral sensation Shane Gillis is in the building. Since then, Ooh. he's been on Flake. Shane Gillis has got those nice Air Max ones, right? The lime ones. Nice ones. Very nice Air Max 90s there. Good choice there, Shane Gillis. He went twice. Once in October 2022 and most recently in October 2023. Over this time, his career has really taken off. He released his second special, Beautiful Dogs, which went straight to Netflix, and he's become a regular on JRE, appearing on the podcast 14 more times. In many ways, Gillis is now faring better in the comedy world than Schultz is. He took a really? more conventional route to the top, relying less... Really? Would you say that? Would you think Shane Gillis is doing better than Schultz in comedy? Hmm. Huh. I think they're probably the same level. I wouldn't say they're better. In terms of what they're level-wise, don't, don't talk... I'm not talking about funny, who's more funnier. Because obviously we know who's funniest, obviously Shane. But do you think who's doing better in comedy? Would you say Shane's doing better than, than Andrew? Hmm. Huh. I think they're both at the same level. In terms of ticket sales and... The... Oh yeah, that's... There we go, Just Good point, Josie. Yeah, he's doing SNL. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, SNL, Bud Light. Those are two very big commercial mainstream kind of stamps of approval, isn't it? Yeah, okay, fair play. Fair play. Long term, he'll be more successful. He's number one on Patreon. Yeah, that's huge coin. Yeah, he's making like 400,000 a month or something. <laughs> Crazy like that, isn't it? Like, they're absolutely killing it. Yeah, true. Okay, 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 okay. I think you're right. I think you're right. I take it back. Shane has 80K Patreon. Flagrant has 20K. Okay. Numbers don't lie. I, I apologize, my friends. I apologize on social media virality like Andrew, which is part of the reason he's more respected in the scene. A lot of people see him as funnier and more of a natural talent than Schultz, and the fact he got his second ever special released on Netflix speaks to that. While Andrew lives out in New York, Shane lives in Austin, Texas, where Joe Rogan lives, and he's embedded himself into- <laughs> In Austin, Texas, where Joe Rogan lives, this fucking hilarious line. <laughs> I live where Joe Rogan lives. It's like, imagine saying that. Imagine being proud to say you live where Rogan lives. 
<laughs> Me and Rogan sitting in the tree. K I S S I N G. To the comedy circle, Joe is built. To be fair, though, if there's one person you should suck off, it's Rogan. Rogan has proven over the years that Rogan gave Brendan Shaw a comedy career on a silver platter. He obviously fucked it up, cool, whatever. But Rogan has proved that he is a literal king and queen maker. So if there's one person in your life, I don't, I don't really believe in sucking anybody off personally unless you want to make them bust and shit you shouldn't suck off anybody i think you should just try and make it on your own and do your own thing and if somebody big and influential wants to co-sign you fair enough but if you should suck off somebody if you should go face down ass up on somebody it's definitely rogan building there in his last two appearances on flagrant there's been this weird almost competitive energy between them mostly coming from schultz and many viewers believe this is because schultz is insecure around gillis oh. wow i never thought of that that makes so much sense that makes so much sense now now i get it now i get it now you understand why Schultz was being such a cunt to Shane the recent episode when he kept asking him, hey, what do you spend your money on? What do you do? All this sort of stuff. He tried to make it seem like, no, we're, we're, we're the same, we're the same, we're the same. Oh, this makes so much sense now. Yeah, well, thank you for giving us the energy for the question yeah. we didn't ask. <laughs> no, I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Excited What's about that. What's your SNL? fucking problem, dude? Exce excited you had a bad attitude when I called excited you today. That. You were grumpy when I yeah, called I you. Yeah, I did have a bad attitude. Why were you being grumpy? Because you, you faked the whole I don't know what's going on thing. And I, I did. I didn't it. like, oh, you did. You called me the day of the pod. You're like, oh, I said, yeah, we oh, had that shit. today? I said, oh, shit, are we how doing often, the pod today? How often do you call me? And I wanted to call you. I wanted to talk to you. Yeah, right before the pod? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say, <laughs> oh, shit. You fake. By the way, yeah, that's wild. These guys are awesome. Yeah. If they're having fun. Yeah. For you guys yeah. to sit here and be like, oh, wait a minute. Let's bring it up and mock them. That's <laughs> fucked up, dude. That's a, <laughs> we're that's a dude. We're yeah. Yeah. We're by you. Yeah, by yeah. using them as an insult. Use yes. it. Yeah. We're using you. <laughs> so <laughs> you're insulting them by saying I no, look no, like no, them? No. Or we're you're insulting, insulting me you. by saying I yeah, look yeah. like yeah. them? This is you back in your victim thing. No, no. I'm not being a victim. I'm saying the jokes you're. Yo, yo, this doesn't seem like a friendly back and forth. There's a few truths in some of the things they're saying. There's some undertones of truth I can feel here. You're doing is not, it's not like. <laughs> not PC? That's not cool. You know what's really <laughs> great? <laughs> You're making fun of these guys, these Down syndrome dudes, yeah. putting out TikTok videos. It's not easy to call out a room of people who are all on the same side. So props to Shane here. You can feel the combative energy coming from Schultz, but Gillis chose not to rise to it. This can be seen again in his most recent flagrant appearance after Mark made a silly joke. You gotta try <laughs> Sugon with a girl. What's Sugon? That's where you Sugon his dick. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. I hate you. Ha! <laughs> You're fucking ha! gay. You're so gay. <laughs> Yo, how did you fall for that, Shane? <laughs> they would definitely not hang out with each other outside of comedy, innit? I'm seeing it now, man. I'm seeing it. They're so they're such different people, isn't it? They're such different people. They would literally not be friends outside of comedy. You don't think so? Can you imagine what Schultz must be like on Coke? Can you imagine what Schultz must be like on Coke? Oh he'd be insufferable. Can you imagine what he's like when he gets drunk? Can you imagine what Schultz must be like when he gets high and when he gets drunk? Because usually your personality ramps up a bit. Can you imagine what he must be like? He's unbearable like he is now, drinking prime energy drinks and shit. Imagine what he's like when he's high or he's drunk. <sighs> no thank you. Shane looked like he wanted to be anywhere in the world other than on that couch. Schultz was clearly annoying him and he got back at him in the best way possible by mocking him and turning his own crew against him. I have ben everything depressed. I need and I'm not what? happy as Ow. angst. Peel. Whoa. You got uh, your nails painted. You look like an angst. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love Schultz what and Schultz are you talking about? Schultz and Piffanies are my favorite. <laughs> Yo. He repeats a statement and he's like. That's crazy though. <laughs> <laughs> it's true.
That's a good impression of Andrew Schultz, though. That's a fucking brilliant impression. we got to go back to that one more time. Let's go back one more time because Shane's a fucking G. Let's do that one more time. Let's go back. That's a brilliant impression. I have Bend everything I need and I'm not what happy as angst. Feel? Whoa. You got I, your nails painted. You look like an angst. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love Schultz and Epiphanies. Schultz and Epiphanies are my favorite. <laughs> Yo, he repeats his statement. He's like, "That's crazy, though." <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's Schultz and Epiphanies. I think drugs are almost like a necessary component to dealing with life. Oh if- my god! I just realized he does that thing I hate, the looking up thing. Schultz does that thing. I just realized now. Schultz does that looking up thing that I hate, like the. The fake fucking looking for my words in this concept of space and time, trying to grasp the sentences and pluck them from the urethra and trying to understand the meaning of life through the words that I'm saying, like piecing together the. I think Jordan Peterson even does it too, like trying to piece the things, synesthesia through words, words of seizure. Like, put your fucking head down, man. Like, fuck off, bro. Looking up at the stars, ass nigga. In the way we have to live it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you need to do drugs if you're fucking in Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yo. You, if you're in Alaska, oh my God. you need drugs. <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. Like if you're like a canner in Alaska, you probably Bro, don't need heroin. I hope you're on the wide for that. that hilarious. Drugs are a necessary That was component. hilarious. <laughs> Yo, keep I, I, I hate how this has turned on me. <laughs> I hate how this has turned no, on me. You know what? I, I, I love that this has turned on me. I got off of me. I how do I let this happen? You can tell this is something shows his boys have been thinking for ages. But someone else bringing it up finally gave them the permission to laugh. Shane proceeded to toy with Andrew even more. Imagine only laughing at your friend because somebody else takes him. That's how you know you're like subservient to your boy. Imagine you can only laugh at your boy when somebody else comes and dunks on him. That's not a good sign, to be fair. You know what I mean? If you can only laugh at your boy because somebody else comes in, it's terrible, to be fair. that you should, It should be an even playing field. But again, you know, the power, the, the power dynamic must be odd because Schultz basically pays everyone salaries here, right? They're friends, but he also pays everybody salaries. So it must be a weird dynamic because he's basically in charge of everybody's mortgage right he get he he basically is the one that <laughs> keeps a roof on everybody's head over everyone's head you know it's a strange place to be in really strange place like he's basically the boss <laughs> yeah exactly he's like brendan exactly k20 he's basically like brendan he's he, he's the, he's like their papa exactly <laughs> more by shifting focus away from him and onto Akash. He asked Akash how the road's going and they started chatting about it, but it didn't take long for Andrew to derail their conversation. I hate the sunglasses. <laughs> I just can't see. Keep we might on. as well be on Zoom. Keep them on, keep them. I'm keeping them on, dude. You if might I take well them off now, it wins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> just, 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 come on. Oh, fuck. That's right. It's a competition thing. It's not that. I really genuinely just feel no, like it I is can a competition thing. You're the one trying to take my glasses off, man. Mm. Uh, <laughs> like, can we hate, reframe it? You hate that we're focused can on Can we reframe it? It's not about you for a second. Okay. Anyway. So, 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 so. Wow. It's the competition thing. You see, he let it slip. He's talking too much. He's telling on himself. It's the competition thing. Wow. So Schultz is in competition with fucking Shane Gillis. I never knew that was a thing. I never knew that. Because, again, they're two very different comedians, two very different people. I wouldn't even imagine why they would be in competition with each other. But I guess deep down Schultz, even though he acts like he doesn't want to be part of Hollywood and he's like anti-industry, He's obviously got his stuff on Netflix. He's obviously touring all the big theaters and stadiums and shit. So maybe deep down, Schultz does have aspirations to be a uh, an actor, comedian. You know, sorry, a comedic actor in the same way that Shane is. Maybe he's maybe he actually wants to be SNL or do SNL. I've not actually heard him mention it before. I don't know. Maybe I've been paying attention, but maybe Schultz deep down actually wants to do SNL himself. Hmm. 
Uh, so more que- that was good. good. Some more questions. Good. Good. Some more really questions about our skin. It was good. It was good. You really got I know, the, the, the under the skin, no, but no, it was yeah, a good no way, no way, no way. Shane beat Andrew at his own game and he made it look easy. But this is something we rarely see on Flagrant. And the next guest I'm going to talk about That's didn't fare so well. In December 2023, DJ Academics made his third appearance on Flagrant and the episode was brutal. It was as if Andrew and the others kept forgetting they had a guest on because they just wouldn't stop interrupting him. About 40 minutes into the podcast, Academics started telling a story about the first time he went to London and what followed was difficult to watch. I'm in London. I go to London for the first time. Yeah. How was it? London was kind of cool. He's definitely not American. Though. Why don't you? No. <laughs> shit. God damn. Yo, act, you on it. Bro. Act, sometimes you're the most brilliant person yeah. that I've ever met. Thank you. And sometimes you be saying some shit. Hey, yeah. Anyway, anyway. So I'm in London. <laughs> Diddy had previously hit me up to say, hey, listen, Yo, stop fucking with my about side chick. Basketball nickname. <laughs> Earl Monroe. Earl the Pearl. Black. <laughs> This is so rude, bro. This is so fucking rude. They're just not even paying attention to him. It's just like, <laughs> holy shit. This this is like um when Brendan was on fucking um, Impulsive. This is like when Brendan was on Impulsive, isn't it? This feels the same thing. Oh, bless academics, but he didn't deserve this either. Jesus. No vaccine. And you're no vaccine. Do you see the drop in creativity? Anyway. So I'm in. <laughs> hold on, this all makes sense. Fast talking out. Fast talking out. I love no, it. He's good. No, he's stop good. This guy's good. good. No, 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 no. This guy's no, no, no. good. I gotta say the story, okay? Say the story, bro. Check this out. So I'm in London. From here, another five minutes went by with him making little to no. <laughs> so I'm in London. <laughs> to be fair, though, to be fair to them, to be fair to them, I'm a fan of academics. I watch his streams. If you guys in the stream chat watch academics, you'll know. He fucking meanders. Academics can, you know, what should be a five minute, 10 minute story, he can make it into half an hour to an hour. He takes long to tell stories. He meanders, like, he goes on tangents. Like, it's hard to kind of, you know, whatever. It's hard to get the story out of him. So I don't blame them for kind of, you know, interrupting and getting bored and restless because if you let academics talk long enough he could talk for hours like he's really he's really good at talking that, that's the thing that i realized when i watched a lot of his content um say what you want about his opinions but academics is brilliant at just like sitting in front of a microphone and talking for hours like, he, he could probably stream for like a week straight if he wanted to like he's really good at that just like talking 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 so maybe that's why progress with the story after which he tried to put his foot down young M.A. Yo. that is a dude but you wouldn't fight him Yo, Yo, young fight M.A. Gay. is this shit I ain't gonna lie young M.A. is this shit can mm. I tell my fucking story bro? yeah bro god damn it tell me your story You'd think that at this point they'd let him speak. But the conversation got sidetracked once again and academics was forced to shout over them before they finally allowed him to tell the story. Hey, could I tell my fucking London story? Yeah, tell your so story. Now. DJ Academics might be the most patient person I've ever seen because he was dealing with this throughout the entire extra long four hour podcast. At one point, as he was telling a different story, Schultz reached across him and grabbed a pack of Zins from Mark. Zins are a brand of nicotine pouches which are highly addictive and Schultz began pressuring academics to take one, continuing even after he refused. Apparently one of them was, one of them is. Academics is like black, black. He's not going to do any zins. So he's the kind of black person that thinks if you smoke bongs, you're, you're basically a crackhead. Do you know what I mean? Academics is like black, black, black. You know what I mean? Like anything outside of weed and booze is basically heroin. So he's never going to do a nicotine patch ever. He's never going to do that. He's not, he's not that guy. So they wasted their time on that one. Honestly, he's definitely one of the type of dudes. He thinks if you're smoking a bong, you might as well be smoking a crack pipe. He's not, he's not about that life. He's old school, black, black. About to be passed out. Try one of these. What is this? This nah, is that's a, a weed shit. I'm good. It's not weed. It's a Zim. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weed shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's scared of a nicotine pouch that's that weed shit that's that that's that edible shit <laughs> that's that thc shit is that nah man oh, oh hell nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah. Yes. oh really Biff mcgee them zins will fuck you up i had six milligrams and uh and the room was spinning oh really okay cool the zins are really it's aggressive me hooked. I'm good. I'm good. It's not about a hook. You won't get hooked. It's, oh, hell no. Uh-uh, I'm good. It's it's like a dip. 
No, just no, no. try it. No, no. Will I you just try it? I got addictive personality for real, for real. Just was, try nah, it. Nah, I can't do it, brother. You can literally take it out a no, second no, no. afterwards. You're no, not no. going to feel oh, it. Somebody says they've got addictive personality and you just keep trying, you keep pressuring them to try something that's highly addictive. Isn't that kind of irresponsible? <laughs> Isn't that terrible to do? If somebody says, hey, I've got addictive personality, I shouldn't be doing this. And you keep pressuring him to do it. <laughs> Isn't that a bad thing? Wow. Yeah, that color, yeah. Six MGs will give you so much anxiety, you'll start confessing to crimes you never did. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I'm the kind of person that still gets a bit of a head rush when I take a pull on the cigarette. If I take a little a little pour of a cigarette, like I could I could get a bit of a head rush, so I should probably stay away from the Zins. Hell no, hell just to the try no. one. No, no, I can't do it, brother. Why I can't do it. Bro. Why don't you anyway. try one? No, 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 because I'm gonna be addicted. You're not gonna be, addicted. Gonna be addicted. It's addicted. such a stupid no. thing to think. Yeah, you, gonna and when you also, see me, you're probably what? an alcoholic no. anyway. So what are you no, concerned no, no, about? No. Zins? Oh. It's crazy seeing two 40 year olds trying to peer pressure someone into taking a drug. But given everything else we've seen, maybe it's not that surprising. In the rest of the pod, Schultz kept coming out with some very questionable takes, such as Adam22 being a marketing genius for allowing his wife to make a public sex tape with another man, and Charlemagne the God being the greatest radio host of all time over hosts like Howard Stern and Wendy Williams. When academics disagreed with Schultz and gave pushback, Schultz simply bulldozed his opinion. The episode got a ton of dislikes, and the comment section is full of flagrant fans who are clearly getting sick of Andrew. It's gotten to the point now where many OGs can no longer bring themselves to watch the podcast because they feel like it's become a circus, and at the heart of it is Andrew's antics. But with the numbers still going up and Schultz's career going from strength to strength, I doubt we'll be seeing any changes anytime soon. Exactly, because he's actually got a, that's the thing people forget, he's actually got a fan base. And like I said before, I think the fan base are well aware of how much of a cunt he is and he just put up with it. Um, so he'll be completely fine unless he goes super of the reservation and he goes completely unhinged and he starts to take, you know, starts to directly, you know, insult his fans. He'll be fine. I think he'll be more than fine. I honestly do think he'll be fine. Um, and he also does a good job of not addressing things as well. He kind of ignores everything. So after the Whitney Cummings things happened, he didn't address it. He didn't talk about it on, on camera. So he does well in terms of like, you know, what's that thing called? Um, blocking out all of that stuff. He doesn't really address stuff that happens online. He kind of leaves it and kind of pretends like it didn't happen. So I think that helps him as well going forward. But yeah, um, Schultz is a fucking wild boy. Schultz is a wild fucking boy. Really is a wild boy. Like, I could never imagine like, you know, putting up with some of that shit. But... Um, like I said before, having watched a lot of Fragrant before, having watched a lot of Brilliant Idiots before in the past, he's the only compliment I can give the guy is that he's always been like that. He's always been a fucking cunt. So it's no surprise that now he's more famous and now that he's got more money and now that he has more clout and now that he's more well connected, he's even more of a cunt than he was previously. It's no surprise to me in the slightest. I swear to God, it's no surprise. It really isn't. If you've been, if you've been paying attention, you know that, that that's been him from minute one. He's always secretly wanted to be that guy and now you can be that guy and he's absolutely <laughs> loving it flexing on people and stuff but honestly like my heart goes out to academics man so i was in london right <laughs> i was in london right like fucking now how many times did you have to say that before they let him fucking finish his sentence like give the guy some space to say what he wants to say man like damn my niggas damn damn Anyways, um, what are you guys saying? What you guys saying? What you guys saying?